Young girl, you're too whirly whirly. To the June 2022 episode of the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. My name's Leslie, I'm coming to you from the south coast of the UK and it's a podcast about all the yarny things, so knitting, crochet, spinning, weaving, whatever I fancy really, I'm that kind of a girl. Hope everyone's well, thank you for all the comments and your thoughts on previous episodes, I love to hear from you so anything you want to comment on please feel very free to do so. I post at the end of each month after recording throughout the month so I basically record when I've got something to, to show you and then everything's pushed together sort of vlog style and is posted on the last weekend of each month. It's called the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast despite the fact that I have lots um, because I very rarely get enough for a garment to be made of all the same yarn so I'm often putting things together, stripes, blocks, fades, any way you like. Which brings us on to the make-along. So I'm running a make-along which started at the beginning of May and it's the Natalie titled Clearly not quite enough yarn sweater make along. I think that's what it's called. There isn't a hashtag, so it really doesn't matter. Essentially, to be eligible to go into the draw, the rules are please make an adult sized garment. Can be sweater, can be cardigan, can be long sleeve, can be short sleeved, could be a dress if you want to. Could be a skirt, although that would be unusual with sleeves, but who am I to judge? So a garment, adult sized, with sleeves of some length, short, long, up to you, made from more than one yarn. The only, the only sort of doesn't apply when you think it might bit of this. The important word in the title is clearly. So we've got to be able to see where the yarns change. So if you're making a, a sweater that has two yarns held together throughout and you can't actually see the change, then that isn't eligible for this particular make along, I'm afraid. Although I'm sure there are plenty others that would be delighted to have you join in. Um, the idea is that we have a distinct difference between two yarns. They can be two yarns from the same manufacturer or dyer, uh, but different bases. So not just different colourways of the same yarn, but they can be from the same dyer, as I just said. The actual requirements for having made stuff, um, as long as no more than 50% complete as at the beginning of May when the make-along started, you're eligible to take part. And ideally 75% finished by the end of the year which is when the make-along will finish. So if you've got something that was half started you've only got to knit a quarter of a garment by the end of the year and you'd be eligible for the draw. It's run on Ravelry. There is a thread on the Not Quite Enough Yarn group and it's just one thread so by all means put in pictures of the yarn you're choosing um, works in progress you know you could put a picture up saying do you think this color combination looks better or this one would you do single rib here or double rib you know whatever it is you want to ask people about there are uh, two draws every quarter so first one will be at the end of this month there'll be one at the end of September and then there'll be a grand prize draw at the end of the year and basically I'm going to go into random number generator the first one I pick, which is a comment only, will have a pattern prize. And the first one I pick that has a picture will have a physical prize. And I've got some yarn on its way to me as that physical prize. So I'll show you that later in the month. I am aware that Ravelry isn't available for everybody. I gave some consideration to whether or not to run this on Ravelry or not, based on experience of previous make-alongs. And the numbers of people emailing me to have their entry that 
get to get their entry to me that way was not vast and I felt it was manageable from my point of view so I hope it's okay from your point of view that if you're not able to use Ravelry please email me at notquiteenoughyarn at gmail.com with your entry and if you can also let me know if you're sending a picture if you're happy for me to put that onto Ravelry then I'll include that in the thread on the um the post on the thread as well um what I put on there is just Les has details and your initials so that helps me to cross check to make sure I have got the right post but there's nothing to identify you unless you want me to your call Giving you my email has reminded me that I haven't told you what all my usernames are. So yes, email address not quite enough yarn at gmail.com and I can be contacted on Ravelry or I'm also on Instagram as at knitting or death. So that's me. I think that's the admin. I've done that quite quickly and it worries me because I've probably forgotten something. But if I have, I'll say it later in the month. The beauty of doing this vlog style. I have two finished objects to show you. I know! The first one uh, I started in January and this was part of the New To You Mal which was being hosted by a lot of different podcasters uh, at the beginning of the year and the idea is that you try a new technique. Now this may be a knitting or crochet technique or it may be something completely different it may be a different craft altogether but the idea is just to give people a bit of an incentive to try something new I had seen some videos of a crochet technique using double-ended crochet hooks and if you go back to the January podcast I talk about it there um, so that was something I'd been thinking of and over time I'd kind of gathered the supplies because uh, I'd got hold of some of the double-ended hooks, I think it'd been a gift the Christmas before and also uh, a former colleague of mine got hold of me on Facebook and said would you like some of this yarn and it's t-shirt yarn so it's the stuff that is wastage from the textile industry so it's stretchy jersey fabric and she had a cone of this stuff so I still thank you very much and it's really good stuff for this particular technique it's also incredibly heavy so I have made this basket I started off just with regular double crochet UK terms single crochet US terms just made a square and then picked up around the edges and used the double ended technique for the rest of the basket then when I got to the handles I just did foundation double crochet slash single crochet here and then carried on and same the other side as well and then carried on until I felt it was tall enough now I do have this left over and I'm not sure well <laughs> I'm not sure what to do with it except possibly put it in the bin I will keep it for a while to see if I use it for any reason I know it might come in useful one day um, if I've still got it in about a year's time it'll be slung I'm not likely to use this yarn again very interesting very useful but this weighs 400 and there's a bit of paper 433 grams this were a fingering weight sweater it'd be over four skeins do you see what I mean it's very very heavy um, for what I'm used I've used it for absolutely fine it stands up on its own it will be a handy little basket to have next to my knitting chair um, skein of yarn in there and a couple of needles and everybody's happy but I don't know what else I'd make it I'd make with this type of yarn except a bag or you know some kind of very heavy householdy thing so I'm really glad I've done it I'm really glad I've finally finished it but I won't be rushing to get more of this yarn to make anything and it certainly would never be used for garments which is what I predominant, predominantly make or at least not by me 
what you do is your your choice the yarn um i can't remember the name of it the manufacturer i know there's one called spaghetti but it, with a z but it's not that but it's i'll put the name on the screen yeah it was a cone that was given to me so that's kind of all i know interestingly none of the cones tell you the meterage and I haven't worked it out yet either, but I will do. Um, and I think because it's, because of the way it's manufactured, as I was make, using this, I noticed some of these pieces, you can see where they're knotted together and some of them are thicker than others. So I can understand why they don't put a meterage on because it would just be too inconsistent a yarn to do that accurately. But it's quite a handy little basket. I'm pleased I've made it won't be rushing to make another. Talking of things I won't be rushing to make another, <laughs> I have finished my sister's sweater and I would like to start this section by apologising to anyone that I've been on a knit night with, a virtual knit night, since March because at practically everyone I've been working on this and moaning about how dull I found it. So I'm sorry and I thank you for your fortitude and patience. But I have now finished, and as it's my sister's birthday tomorrow, I'm rather glad of that. So let me hold it up first of all, so you can see it in all its glory. So this is my sister's sweater. And this came about because she said to me, can you make that please? This was found in a general interest women's magazine. I've subsequently found out it was the People's Friend in late October 2021. But she just said, would you be able to make that? And as soon as I saw it, you just know that it requires that specific yarn. It's not Ferrile, it looks it, it's not Ferrile. <laughs> it's a mock Ferrile because the yarn is dyed and printed in such a way that it creates this pattern, which means you can't do this in any other yarn. So that meant I had to buy the yarn, but she has a significant birthday tomorrow, one of those with a zero on it. So I thought, well, I will get this for her. Well, as it turned out, it's actually a very affordable yarn, extremely good value, so that, was not an excessive spend at all. It's very reasonably priced. But this was what she wanted. So I thought, well, there's no point in me saying I'll make it from stash because I can't. So I printed it off as I do. And you can tell that this is my printed copy because I've got all my numbers and notes. This is the way I work. So if I've got increases, for example, I'll, um, yes, yeah, so I've got decreases here. or even increases here. So I've got the row number and then the number of stitches that I should have at any one point. That's how I personally work. So what is the yarn? <laughs> this is by King Cole and regular viewers will know that I am a fan of King Cole. Uh, it's probably my favorite commercial brand and it's their Fjord DK. It is a very soft, very nice feeling, 100% uh, acrylic. Meant to be an anti-pill acrylic. That will, you know, the proof of the pudding will be in the, well, the wearing. She's not going to eat it, she's going to wear it. Um, quite a few colourways, and it's dyed in such a way that you get these stripes. So I didn't have to do anything except knit and knit and knit. It's made in pieces. It's designed as a, a beginner sweater. So it's made in pieces, front back, two sleeves, very simple, um, slightly unusual trimmings, combination of garter and ribbing, rather than just a plain one by one rib or anything like that, but very plain knitting, which is why I complained about it so much. <laughs> I did a little bit of yarn management. I bought an extra ball of this stuff because I usually do. Um, and this is what I have left. 
and I have over a ball left, but <laughs> none of them are complete. I did a fair bit of yarn management because I wanted, certainly in the main areas, to match the stripes up. So I've done that sort of pretty well on this side seam here. So there was a, a fair amount of yarn management, but not massively so. And even with trying to do yarn management, it didn't quite work because my sleeves started off, I thought, at the same point. But then, obviously, I'd gone wrong somewhere. So... <laughs> um, it's a 22 stitch gauge, so 22, I think it's 22. I have a pattern that will tell me. Um, where's it gone? So yes, 22 stitches for four inch, which is sort of, I would expect, for um, double knitting weight yarn. I had to go down a needle size to get that gauge with this yarn. That's fine. I hope she likes it. If not, I won't be making another. <laughs> Even if she does like it, I won't be making another. I did toy with the idea of a dog coat with these leftovers for her little Yorkshire Terrier. I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, every couple of years she asks me to make fingerless gloves. So I think I'll just hold on to this until she asks for the next pair and then uh, she can have it out of that. Because it is, it's a really nice yarn. It feels lovely, it feels soft without being... It still has substance, you know, it doesn't feel kind of floppy. So it feels nice, knits up smoothly. And as a beginner pattern, the, the pattern is called the Mock Feral Sweater by Pat Mencini. And as a beginner pattern, it's pretty good. I mean, it's very much in the style of the sort of knitting that I grew up learning, where you are in pieces, so a lot of purling, which I know isn't everyone's cup of tea. But because you're so reliant on the yarn to give you the pattern, it is just straight knitting. And no doubt for some, um, the fact that it changes colours, and then you have these bits of pattern, and then you have these bits of plain, um, that will be enough to spur people on to do the next bit, and the next bit, and the next bit. Personally, I didn't find that. I don't know what the problem was I had with this. Probably there's something deep in my psyche that says it's not for you, Leslie, so you're not that interested. Let's hope it's not that, but it's possible. But yeah, it's I'm pleased with how it's knit up. It looks very effective. I mean, if you were a beginner knitter and you produced that, you would be rightly pleased with yourself because it looks far more complicated than it is, which is normally my favourite type of pattern, let's be honest. I like to go simple, look complicated. But there we go nothing else to add really um yeah won't be making another one hope she likes it a quick update for you my sister liked her sweater it fitted uh, she had forgotten about it um had remembered following a conversation with a friend suddenly thought oh i think my sister's making me a sweater but wasn't sure if it would be uh, in time for her birthday or for Christmas so she wasn't expecting it until she received a large squashy parcel but she was happy with it and I'll put a couple of pictures in of her uh, wearing it so you can see it on her and you can also see what I've come to realize which is that members of my family can't take serious sweater photographs clearly yeah <laughs> hello lovelies now this is going to be hard to believe, <laughs> a bit like my hair, um, but occasionally it's been suggested that I might be a bit contrary. I know! The reason why I bring this up is last month I had a, a question which prompted a review of the items that I'd made and most of the ones that I didn't wear, I didn't wear because they're a bit warm and I'm of a an age where warmth comes easily to me. So this month I'm going to show you two warm sweaters that I'm making. <laughs> I have got an eye on the winter here and um, I think the difference is I'm making them knowing that they're thick cosy sweaters. Some of the ones that I've reviewed last month I didn't realise how warm they would be, especially the ones with mohair in them. So I 
had made them thinking they'd be regular throw on you know all but the summer type sweaters and actually they're not they're very warm whereas these two that I'm making and I'm going to show you one now and one in the uh, review of whips um, I know that these are going to be thick and cozy and they're being kind of made with that in in mind and on purpose so so the first of these is a crochet sweater and this was a classic example of I was going through Ravel, um, Instagram and I saw someone else with this pattern I thought oh that looks interesting and this pattern is the Snowstorm by Samantha Sabido, 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 forgive me I don't know the correct pronunciation, um, also known as Adventures in Crafting. Here is the designer's picture of the sweater. So you can see why it's called Snowstorm. It's something that I'm going to be making probably for the rest of the year because all of those snowflakes that you see there are made individually and then sewn together. So far I've made three. <laughs> My plan is if I do a few every week then that will be good. Now I was a little concerned because I've only made a few but they don't sit terribly flat when they first come off the hook but they do block out and this one's blocking at the moment so basically these boards and these pins are going to be in use all year as I block out the individual pieces so that they're all the same size and easy to put together. The black yarn is some generic wool double knitting yarn that I got at Alexandra Palace many years ago and what I'm going to do is use up oddments of double knitting weight for the snowflake bits. So this is some stranded dye works in the frostbite colourway. Now it comes from when the base was called Castaway. I think now it's Merino Nylon. Could be Merino. Um, but yes, it's in the frostbite colourway. So I'll have a few of these and then I'll just go through the stash what part balls of double knitting I have I will put into here and then place them all before I sew them so I can make sure I've, I have the colours together or apart as I wish. So that's the first of the uh, thicker sweaters and very much a long-term project. I probably won't talk about it every month because all there'll be is a hopefully increasing pile of of these hexagons but I will plan to be finishing this towards November December so that I have it for the winter. Cheers. Hello lovelies. When I first started this vlog podcast whatever this is um, <laughs> part of the initial thought was to document my attempt to work through my stash. At the time I had two cupboards worth and I was hoping to get that down, just reduce it, it was feeling a little, little big. Um, I now have three cupboards worth <laughs> and I have bought very little of this yarn since starting the podcast, I mean most before then was, was my purchase. Um, but yeah, like I say, the initial plan was to um, get the stash down. And once I got to three cupboards, I thought I really want to get back to two. Ideally, this one behind me. Uh, if you can see the door open, it's so we don't get too much glare from the um, the studio light. Um, and also there's one over in the car corner. So I'd like to have the yarn in those two. And then this one here can be for hand knit sweaters, perhaps for knitting books. If you were watching last month's podcast, uh, you will have seen all the yarns that himself got me on his trips. And I said, you know, this isn't the month for reducing the, the stash. This month isn't either. <laughs> I have stuff. <laughs> now, firstly, and very excitingly, I won a prize. Um, Benta from 
Arctic Crafts. Um, so the the epilogue lady on her podcast. She has an Etsy shop, which I'll link below. She ran a comp uh, make along for short sleeved tops, and I entered the magpie tendency that I was making and got drawn in the prize. So thank you, Benta. Look at these fabulous gorgeousnesses. These are two skeins of her fine moringa fi moringa fine merino fingering, which is 100% Falkland merino, 400 meters per 100 grams superwash, and it's in the tidal wave colorway. And it's coming up a bluer blue. It's actually slightly more green, sort of teal. It's a variegated tonal. I'm never quite sure what the difference is, but it goes between a sort of tealy green to a bluey teal, if you see what I mean. And I am absolutely delighted with these. Her yarns are always so lovely. Her colour palette is, is a good match for mine, I would say. Um, I do have another skein of her yarn which I bought, which will be the giveaway prize, which I'll show you later in the podcast when I do the draw. But yes, these are fabulous. So himself, let me go back a bit. My not buying yarn, I usually give myself a little, a little option for a splurge once a year. And this is sometimes going to a yarn festival. Uh, last year or possibly the year before, I lose track of time as we all do. Um, I bought online from vendors who'd had their shows cancelled because of COVID. Must have been the year before. So I do allow myself a little bit of spending. A kind of one-off, let's go wild and then back to knitting it down. She laughed. So himself has had lots of trips and he said that he was going to watch cricket. I'm sorry if you like cricket, but any sport you can play for three days and still not know who's winning is not going to do it for me, I'm sorry. But he was watching cricket in Amsterdam. And the Stephen and Penelope shop is in Amsterdam. And he said he would have the Saturday morning free. And I said, it's not now, sunshine. But himself and his very good friend went into Stephen and Penelope. And he said it was a really good shop, very helpful staff, because I'd given him a map with where to find it and also a list of the dyers that I was particularly interested in. Now, the one that I really wanted, I thought they'd probably sold out of, that's Lola Bean Yarn Co. Um, and they had. That's fine. That was my expectation. But he basically went to the, the people in the shop and said, I have this list, please can you point me in the right direction? And he said they were really helpful because they, they showed him where the dyers were, the, the, or the yarns were that I was interested in, and then just left him to, to browse, but were available to help. So he was very impressed with the service. And I'm very impressed with what he bought. So in no particular order, uh, now some of these yarns, um, are possibly not that exception, exceptional depending on where you live in the world but they're not necessarily easy for me to get here and the first is one of those this is spin cycle yarns and these are yarns that I just wanted to try you know you hear the names and you think I want to try them so this is spin cycle dyed in the wool 100% American wool 200 yards, sport weight, truth bomb is the colourway. And I think this would be great uh, with something very dark, perhaps a black stripe of this. It would look like stained glass, I think. So very happy, very happy with that. Next we have the Urban Pearl. This is showing a little more pink. It's it's more of um, a red on the sort of orange and brown side of red. 
variegated it goes from a sort of burgundy here to a more orangey gingery rusty kind of red here and this is the Lux High Twist Sock, 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Silk, hello, uh, 365 metres per 100 grams in the Waterloo Sunset colourway. And it feels glorious. We then have a couple of skeins from La Bien Aime. So this is a merino single, it's 366 metres per 100 grams, 100% superwash merino in the colourway Lazy Daisy. Uh, again it's coming up a little more pink, it's more of a sort of very pale peachy coral sort of colour with orange, very pretty. We've been a bit subtle so far. So he, he went to my bright side and again, uh, La Piana Me, <laughs> hello. <laughs> and this, this is highlighter yellow. This is wonderful. Um, so it's Merino Super Sock, 425 meters per 100 grams in the J Kim is Grello colorway. And it is gray and yellow with speckles of green and speckles of dark. Mm. He also got me um, another 50 gram skein. I think this is 50 grams. Yes, 200 yards, 183 meters. Mominoki yarn. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And this is a sock happy mini, 80% wool, 20% polyamide in the pink spinel or spinel colourway. So this is a sort of dark fuchsia with patches of a sort of a dark mauve, almost a black sort of colour in there. Oh, all the gorgeousness. He got me some West Wall, which I think is Stephen and Penelope's own brand. This is their bicycle base, which is 10% Texel, 90% Falkland Merino, 350 meters for 100 grams. And I'm assuming this is the colorway Prince. It's coming up a little more purple, which would make sense for Prince. It's slightly bluer than it's showing. That's probably closer to it. All these pretties oh my goodness we have some undercover otter yarn and fibers from Amsterdam this is their singularity base uh, so that's 100% um, superwash merino singles 366 meters per 100 grams in the fail safe colorway and I really do like this orange isn't a sort of go-to color for me but I really like this and with those red flashes, just absolutely beautiful. And the final one, I seem to have fluff upon me, is from um, Third Vault Yarn. Sorry, I went blank on them yet. I've got quite a bit of their stuff. This is the Companion Sock, uh, sorry, Companion Four Ply. So it's 100% Superwash Falklands Merino in the mycelium colourway, 400 metres for 100 grams. So a beautiful teal with dark blue into kind of purples and lilacs. And is anyone thinking what I'm thinking? I think we have the beginnings of a beautiful friendship here. So yes, the, uh, I guess it's because it's Falkland Merino, it's taken the, they're, they're all Falkland Merino, they've taken the colour in a similar way. And I just think they work beautifully together. Just stunning. So that's my somewhat extravagant prize and haul. So thank you again, Benta, for the prize. Couldn't be more delighted. I love that colour. 
I think that tidal wave colour is absolutely beautiful. And thank you himself for being a good person and not only doing my shopping but doing some of his own as well. What a nice man. I, again, as I often say, I'll let him stay for now. He's going away again next week. I am not expecting any more yarn because he's going away next week. He's going away the week after. He's going away the week after that. All cricket related. Um, I am not expecting any more yarn. And I'm feeling, I'm beginning to feel a little bit overwhelmed. Um, I feel like I need to kind of process what I've got in my head and sort of work out some plans for these beautiful colours. Because I have a lot of stuff that sits in the stash. And we all do, and there's nothing wrong with that. And there is a joy to be found in thinking, look at my beautiful stash. But I'm feeling like I want to use some of it and and get use from it. It's 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 beautiful stuff and it's designed to be made into something equally beautiful or more beautiful. So I really would like to to get cracking. I'm feeling I want to have lots of fun with bright and more subtle colours. So, so yes, um, <laughs> these cupboards aren't emptying anytime soon. But what pretties to go in them. Hello lovelies. Got another finished object. This was a bit of a, a palette cleanser after the fine gauge or finish gauge of my sister's sweater. But I have finished my whatever. So I'll put some pictures in here of me wearing it. I would be wearing it now, but it's warm. So I'm wearing a shirt instead. I'm sure you understand. So this is the Whatever Sweater by Julie Knits in Paris. And this pattern was very kindly given to me for my birthday last year, uh, along with another one from um, Kellyanne of Yarn Tales by the Sea. So thank you, Kellyanne. Uh, she sends her best wishes to everyone. She's still not able to knit due to a, a shoulder injury, but uh, she's she's getting there, hopefully. Hopefully. So this sweater pattern isn't really a pattern. Um, so it tells you to kind of cast on some stitches for the neckband. It doesn't tell you how many, for example. So uh, not a beginner pattern, <laughs> but the idea is that you're making a loose fitted casual sweater, probably that you've made something similar before. And it's just, I mean, it's described as a carefree, carefree sweater recipe for your emergency needs of comfort knitting. So don't have to do a gauge swatch. You just cast on and get cracking. Um, not for everyone that type of pattern but it works it kind of gives you an idea of how to start and how to get cracking i'm going to talk now about i'm not going to call them the modifications because on a pattern that loose you're not really modifying anything but the the design elements that i put in that weren't in the original pattern so the first is this neckline and because this is designed as a, a winter sweater for when I'm sitting working in this room and it's getting cold, I wanted a fairly high neckline, um, but not too tight around the front of the neck. I find that uncomfortable. So I worked back and forth for a while and then joined up for a couple of rows before I started, changed needle size and started the raglan. The raglan uh, was one of the suggested types, so it's a, a yarn over knit one yarn over which you can't really see in this pattern but you can hopefully see there are some eyelets either side of the raglan increase um, as the pattern got bigger I started doing some of the increases on the body only because I felt the sleeves were big enough and I just did a knit two together yarn over to still have an eyelet on this side to match the eyelet increase on the body side. I did a couple of short rows in the back just to help raise the back neck a little. And the other thing that I did that wasn't in the pattern is I did a few extra stitches, just I think four, um, for an underarm. 
most patterns that you make you have a sort of flat piece in the underarm so I did the same here then I just did decreases on the sleeves kept those relatively short relatively um, fitted because that's the style that I like I was going to make this very long uh, but with a long welt um, I didn't make it very long <laughs> but uh, it's a comfortable length part of my thought process was well let's be honest I'd like to finish this now the other part of my thought process was there's a lot of viscose in this and I'll go through the yarns in a sec and viscose has a tendency like bamboo to kind of hang so I thought if I make it long to start with it's going to be down to my knees after a couple of wears this is unblocked, unworn, um, but I think it will probably grow and sort of sag a little. The yarns are scraps, stash bits, leftovers, part balls, all the four ply and fingering for, uh, sorry, four ply and sport weight that I've had left over from previous projects. So, for example, this at the top was from the second magpie tendency that I finished last month, uh, as was this purple. There's all sorts of stuff in here that um, I sort of recognised as I went along. <laughs> There's some sock yarns in here. There are bits left over from um, the bright uh, Liz Virka that I made a couple of years ago in all the neons. And in fact, there was a bit of pooling that I really loved. These four bright rows here before we get to the welt. That pooling is completely unintentional. But I love it. <laughs> As I got to the second and third row, I thought, oh, this is going nicely and I'm going to run out of this yarn in a minute. But I love the way those colours just sat together nicely in blocks around the sweater. So that made me very happy. So, yeah, there's all sorts of yarns in here. Um... Like I say, mixed weights because I've got uh, fingering, so four ply and sport weight in here. I rush and join them together and then I plied them with some viscose yarn. Now these are the cones that I've had in my stash for a long time that I bought uh, following the failure of the Texair Yarns Company. So these are three strands, they're very fine weight strands of uh, viscose plied with the four ply and I did that on the wheel to give a nice even marl when you hold yarns together you can sometimes end up with it being a bit patchy and I wanted something more even so that's what we've got um surprising amount of greys and pinks in my stash obviously <laughs> it took me by surprise but I'm pleased with the the overall fit of it and the feel of it uh, because I didn't make it as long as I'd originally planned I had some yarn left over, some of the um, plied balls left over. And I finished this during knit night on Wednesday. And Claire from our knit night group said, oh, make yourself a hat to match. Well, I'm possibly not gonna keep this hat. Um, or this one, because <laughs> there was a little bit left over. So I've just mixed it with some ordinary um, double knitting weight yarn. I did them on my Whirly Whirly machine, my Addy Express King size. And as I was doing them, it occurred to me, I haven't made any hats um, this year for homeless folks. So these will be the start of this year's homeless hats pile. So that's used up the last of these uh, oddments, applied with the viscose and a couple of hats that will hopefully be warm for people who could do with a bit of more warmth in their lives so that's the whatever I've rattled through that haven't I it is a very simple pattern it is a top-down raglan that you then adapt as you wish so I started off on four and a half millimeter needles and I was going to do it all on I think fives or five and a halves started the body and I thought this gauge is going much too tight I wanted this to be a loose um, easy fit sweater so I took it back to the rib kept that at the the smaller gauge the smaller needle I'd only done a few rows so I took it back and then started again on I can't remember if these are sixes or six and a half millimeters but 
quite big so that's why it's worked up so quickly i think it's taken me a fortnight to make this sweater because it's such a loose gauge but it has a nice feel to it a nice drape i think that's the viscose as i say that may become my undoing uh, because of that i've also put quite deep cuffs into the sleeves so that if they go baggy in length they'll hopefully have something to keep them in at the wrists because flappy sleeves are an aversion of mine and I only went down one needle size for this rib at the welts because I didn't want it to be kind of tulip shaped but uh, I just wanted again a bit of structure in it so that if it does go a bit saggy and baggy there's something to help just keep it keep it straighter rather than go outwards and go flappy yeah that really is all I have to say but no doubt in the winter you will be seeing much of this because I rather like it and I expect to be wearing it quite regularly hopefully cheers hello lovelies I'm recording this on Saturday what is it the 26th feels a bit like the world's going to hell in a handcart so if I don't seem as enthusiastic as usual, that's why. But let's look for positives. And if anyone's out protesting at the moment, I'd just like to say thank you, good luck, keep safe. Back to yarn. Hello everyone. <laughs> it's prize time. That's come round quickly. Um, so I said there would be a prize draw uh, on the make along at the end of June and another at the end of September before doing a, a grand prize at the end of the year. And so I went from posts numbers, posts number, post numbers, posts two to 117. <laughs> and the pattern prize is uh, post number four, who is Ruatha. So I will get in touch with you and congratulations, you've won a pattern prize, so fantastic. The yarn prize is this beautiful, bright, sunny, cheerful yarn from Benta of Arctic Crafts. Um, I wanted to buy a skein of yarn for the prize. As I'd won that lovely prize from Benta, um, my thought process was, well, if I buy a skein of yarn, then my post will postage cost part of the order will contribute to the cost of sending me the prize. I don't know if that's how it actually worked out or not. Uh, as one of the many people I know called Claire say, um, no good deed goes unpunished. So I hope it didn't cause you any problems, Benta. I hope it did help. Yes, I hope so. So this lovely yarn, it's a Poldale sock yarn. So it's 80% Poldale, 20% nylon, 100 grams, 400 meters, superwash in the Pippi Husset that is definitely not how you pronounce it, but that's what I'm going to go with colourway. I will try and show you that to see if it can be red. So this beauty, which as you can see, is a glorious yellow, tones of yellow, but also with speckles of kind of reds. Just absolutely lovely, bright, cheery yarn. That's what we need. And that is one by post number 44, which was an email entry from Sharon. So thank you for taking part. I will get in contact with you to get your postal address so I can get this to you. Thank you to everyone who's taken part. It's been really lovely to see um, the conversations happening on that thread. So people are putting up their yarn choices, they're putting up um, photos of the patterns that they're going to work on. Um, yeah, just really lovely to see other people saying, oh yeah, I like this or I've made one of those, it's a really nice pattern to work, or any of those types of things. So, big thank you to everyone who's involved and has added to that thread. Congratulations to the winners. And I'm just going to put that down there. And yes, I'll be in touch to uh, get, get your prizes to you. So this is the end of June, halfway through the year. My goodness. I haven't shown you all of the crafts that I've done this year, partly because um, I did some machine knitting and it was a bit spooky because I think it was Anna just posted on one of the weekly vlogs saying, have you used the knitting machine recently? We haven't seen it for a while. And I'm like, that is spooky because I've been using it in the last two days. Mm. So 
<laughs> something in the ether obviously um and at the moment i have pieces of knitted fabric that are just pieces of knitted fabric so i will be working on those and showing you them next month hopefully as finished items they shouldn't take long to finish relatively speaking so we look forward to july um yeah i'm not sure that it holds anything in particular for me yeah um anything that does come along i will talk about either this time next month or in the weekly vlog um but yeah i think that's that's it i hope you're all well um i know we live in trying times so i hope that you are keeping well feeling safe feeling secure in what you're doing um looking at stats in the uk covid numbers are up so you know that definitely hasn't gone away and there are other things happening we're going through a bit of a period of unrest in a number of places i feel so so please do keep well and keep safe look after yourselves i hope you find solace in something gorgeous be it your crafting or you know whatever it is you do that that helps you escape from the pressures of the world i hope that you have the opportunity to do those things not a massively long podcast this month yay they all cry uh, like i say some of the stuff that i've done i will be showing you next month because showing you a piece of knitted fabric and saying this is my sweater when it's just a piece of knitted fabric it's a bit like going into a fabric shop and saying here's the dress i'm making doesn't really narrow it down so so take very good care of yourselves thank you for all the comments and thoughts i love to hear from you congratulations to the winners in the draw i will be in touch and have a good month everyone if you watch the vlog i'll see you on friday otherwise i'll see you at the end of july gosh take care thank you bye bye